Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at each of the monstrous toy experiments found in Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 and 2. This rundown will incorporate everything we know about these mysterious entities, their appearances in the game, and even some secrets and easter eggs associated with them. Bear in mind we will only be looking at hostile enemy encounters, so creatures like Kissy Missy and the Prototype will not be included as they have so far only been briefly teased in the story of the game. I'm sure we'll cover them in a future video as more chapters emerge from the production line. I have also made theories on both of these characters if you wish to check out my in-depth thoughts on them. With that said, sit back, relax, and let's take a look at the monsters of Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 and 2. Huggy Wuggy is one of the most iconic creations to come out of a world famous Playtime Co. toy factory. A smiling blue mascot with googly eyes and long arms and legs. Huggy was first created in the year 1984, and went on to become a household name just like Poppy Playtime had years earlier. The original concept behind Huggy Wuggy, as its name suggests, was to hug children back, making them feel loved even if their parents weren't around. He even had a catchy theme song, which can be heard when interacting with this informational board. However, as with other toys on this list, things took a dark turn when Playtime Co. began conducting secret human experimentation in a bid to bring toys like Huggy to life. The result being disturbing, feral versions of these toys with a life of their own. We see signs of this human experimentation when examining Huggy's mouth, where we find two sets of teeth, one animal and the other eerily human. Huggy was Experiment 1170, and as described by this scientist, was the most obedient of the experiments at the time of recording this audio log. Experiment 1170, Huggy Wuggy, remains the optimal outcome due to his sufficient intelligence paired with maximum obedience. End of log. This didn't stop Huggy Wuggy going on a kill crazy rampage and trying to hug our protagonist to death shortly after entering the abandoned factory. This culminating in a tense and anxiety inducing race for our lives through the vents of the factory production line. At the end of his chase it seems Huggy Wuggy met his demise after we drop a giant crate on top of him, sending the bloodthirsty blue mascot hurtling into the depths of the facility, leaving a bloody trail in his wake. However, the plot thickens when we examine this wall in Chapter 2. You'll notice how the pipes and brickwork seem to be covered in blood splatter and clumps of thick blue hair. It seems as though this hair and blood belongs to a still very much alive Huggy Wuggy, who somehow managed to survive the colossal fall into the abyss and crawl back into the vent system to heal up, meaning it is likely we will encounter him again in a future chapter, in an even more enraged and hostile frame of mind than before. Now before moving on to our next monster, it is worth mentioning the mini Huggies who appear during the Wacka Wuggy side quest in Poppy Playtime Chapter 2. These small plush sized variants known as Huggy Buddies are very much alive and out for blood. We must use the giant hands of our grab pack to whack these smaller Huggy variants as they appear from 18 holes located around this room. These Huggies come in a variety of different colours, and make some disturbing noises moments before they strike. Yeah. 
Bunzo Bunny is one of several experiments used in the game station as part of the Orphan Initiative where children adopted by Playtime Co. employees were subjected to a series of tests aimed at gauging intelligence, reflex and strength. Bunzo is yellow in colour, with black eyes and buck teeth as you might expect a rabbit to have. He wears a party hat and green dungarees, clashing a pair of cymbals loudly together as he lowers down from a tube in the ceiling toward the player of his game. Bunzo Bunny's game is called Musical Memory, whereby participants are tasked with memorising colours and symbols as they flash up in quick succession, and then punch them back in using a selection of buttons. Green, white, violet, and... Green, white, violet, and violet. If the player isn't fast enough or their memory fails them, then Bunzo attacks from above. An interesting and slightly creepy easter egg is associated with Bunzo Bunny. Once leaving the musical memory test chamber, we hear a loud crashing sound and the flailing of Bunzo's cymbals. This indicates that Mommy Longlegs, who we'll discuss very soon, was enraged at Bunzo's failure to kill the player, and so murdered him in a frenzied rage as a result. When returning to the game station, we can now see Bunzo's lifeless corpse strung up high in the rafters above. Perhaps then we should end on a slightly more upbeat note. Bunzo has a cardboard cutout located just before entering the Musical Memory Arena. Unlike many of the other cutouts, this one doesn't seem to contain any creepy messages. Rather, it gives us a glimpse into Bunzo's personality, which seems friendly and upbeat. He enjoyed celebrating the birthdays of the children who visited the factory. Take a listen. I know when your birthday is! June 28th! <laughs> Make a wish! Happy birthday to you! Part cute dog, part horrifying bug, PJ Pugapilla, as the name suggests, is a bright blue dog slash caterpillar hybrid with a body 100 feet long and many legs which slowly carry him around a playground themed area for his mini game, Statues. In statues, we must stand still whenever the music stops and the lights turn on, and then move forward under the cover of darkness. Failure to do so results in PJ attacking and eating our hapless hero alive. PJ Pugapilla was originally designed as part of the Swappamore's toy line a series of toys that included Catby, where parts could be swapped around as the user desired. Now he's swapped his calm and lovable demeanour for that of a bloodthirsty killing machine, though one who only attacks if we fail to abide by the rules of his game. We find this cutout of PJ just before entering the playground area to play the game's statues. When the button is pressed, the following audio is spoken. To play with PJ? Caterpillar or Pug? I'm crowded on all four hundreds! Mm, I'm hungry for some delicious bones! Do you have some bones for PJ? Blow! Blow! Last, but by no means least, is stretchy arachnid nightmare fuel, Mommy Longlegs. Originally released by Playtime Co. in the year 1991, using their new patented stretchy elastic, 
Mommy Long Legs was the most flexible toy ever created. Her lower body is pink and circular, from which a torso sprouts. Gloved hands and feet attach to long, bendy limbs. Her hair is long and squiggly, and her eyes and mouth big and wide. It seems the original Mommy design went through several iterations, as we see detailed on this document here, while exploring the warehouse. It seems these scrapped designs may have been in part used to create her family, which consisted of a child and husband character as seen on this poster art. Here are a few quick facts about Mommy's creation in the game. She is voiced by actress Elise Lovelock. Her appearance changed quite drastically from the original teaser trailer released in February 2022 and her final form found in Chapter 2, which released in May. Finally, it seems Mommy Longlegs was based on the appearance of a popular 90s children's toy, Betty Spaghetti. Mommy's living version was created from a human test subject known as Marie Payne. So far, the only human test subject confirmed by name to be used in the process of creating one of these monstrous experiments. Mommy Longlegs is also confirmed to be Experiment 1222. We learn from notes located in the game station area that Mommy Longlegs was extremely hostile towards adults, but friendly and maternal around the orphan children. Therefore, in order to suppress her murderous desires, Mommy was allowed to mix with the children during their testing on a daily basis, with scientists and researchers watching from the safety of a catwalk above. Over time, she formed a close bond with the children and mourned them when they would mysteriously disappear after testing ended. When we first meet Mommy Longlegs, she seems quite friendly, wishing for us to partake in the very games the child test subjects once did. The game station is still working. It will be just like old times. However, this facade soon fades as Mommy grows more and more frustrated with our winning streak, eventually revealing that she is aware we used to work at Playtime Co. ourselves. It was always so sad to see the kids go. They called me Mommy because I was the closest thing they ever had to one. But they come for games, and never come back. They left Mommy to die alone. Mommy didn't deserve that. But you, you worked here. So if anyone deserves to die alone, it's you. This culminates in a final confrontation with Mommy, where she turns feral and chases us through the depths of a playtime factory. Here is her chase sequence in full for your enjoyment. After seemingly escaping Mommy Longlegs, she shows back up one last time, and while in her frenzied state, accidentally collides with a grinding machine, her hand becoming trapped inside it. We have no option but to flip the switch and watch her painful demise. Oh, 
after her death, Mommy is claimed by the mysterious prototype entity. And for a detailed analysis of this experiment and a theory all about it, check out this video. I'll leave a link at the end of this one. Speaking of which, we have indeed reached the end of today's video, and a look at each of the monsters encountered in Poppy Playtime thus far. I hope you found this video both entertaining and informative, and if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.